the rotoverter power amplification system. Not all pulsed drive systems use permanent magnets as part of their drive mechanism. For example, the rotoverter, designed by Hector D. Paris Torres of Puerto Rico, and which has been reproduced by several independent researchers, producing at least 10 times more output power than the input power, uses standard three-phase electric motors instead of magnets. This system has been reproduced by several independent researchers and it produces a substantial power gain when driving devices which need an electrical motor to operate. At this time, the website http colon slash slash panacea-bocaf.org slash rotoverter.htm has considerable details on how to construct the device as do the http colon slash slash www.scribd.com doc 2965018 high efficiency for electric motors and the http colon slash slash www.scribd.com doc 2634718170 rv energy saving x documents. The outline details are as follows. Motor. Coupling. Alternator. Three capacitors. Diode rectifier. The output device is an alternator which is driven by a three-phase mains powered, three horsepower to 7.5 horsepower motor, both of these devices can be standard asynchronous squirrel cage motors. The drive motor is operated in a highly non-standard manner. It is a 240 volt motor with six windings as shown below. These windings are connected in series to make an arrangement which should require 480 volts to drive it, but instead, it is fed with 120 volts of single phase AC. The input voltage for the motor, should always be a quarter of its rated operational voltage. A virtual third phase is created by using a capacitor which creates a 90 degree phase shift between the applied voltage and the current capacitor substitution box 0.5 to 31.5 microfarads in steps of 0.5 microfarads the objective is to tune the motor windings to give resonant operation a startup capacitor is connected into the circuit using the press button switch shown to get the motor up to speed at which point the switch is released allowing the motor to run with a much smaller capacitor in place Although the running capacitor is shown as a fixed value, in practice, that capacitor needs to be adjusted while the motor is running, to give resonant operation. For this, a bank of capacitors is usually constructed, each capacitor having its own on-off switch, so that different combinations of switch closures give a wide range of different overall values of capacitance. With the six capacitors shown above, any value from 0.5 microfarad to 31.5 microfarad can be rapidly switched to find the correct resonant value. These values allow combined values of 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, by selecting the appropriate switches to be on or off. Should you need a value greater than this, then wire a 32 microfarad capacitor in place and connect the substitution box across it to test higher values step by step to find the optimum value of capacitor to use. The capacitors need to be powerful, oil-filled units with a high voltage rating, in other words, large, heavy and expensive. The power being handled in one of these systems is large and setting one up is not without a certain degree of physical danger. These systems have been set to be self-powered but this is not recommended, presumably because of the possibility of runaway with the output power building up rapidly and boosting the input power until the motor burns out. The Yahoo EVGRAY group at http colon slash slash groups.yahoo.com group EVGRAY has a large number of members many of whom are very willing to offer advice and assistance. A unique jargon has built up on this forum, where the motor is not called a motor but is referred to as a prime mover or PM for short, which can cause confusion as PM usually stands for permanent magnet. Rotoverter is abbreviated to RV while DCPMRV stands for direct current permanent magnet rotoverter and TRIFO is a non-standard abbreviation for transformer. 
Some of the postings in this group may be difficult to understand due to their highly technical nature and the extensive use of abbreviations, but help is always available there. To move to some more practical construction details for this system. The motor, an alternator, considered to be the best for this application is the Balder M3770 T7.5 horsepower unit. The specification number is 07H002X790, and it is a 230-460 volt 60 Hz 3 phase, 19 ninths point 5 amp, 1770 rpm, power factor 81, device. The Balder website is www.balder.com and the following details should be considered carefully before trying any adaption of an expensive motor. The following constructional photographs are presented here by kind permission of Ashwath of the EVGRAY group. The end plate of the drive motor needs to be removed and the rotor lifted out. Considerable care is needed when doing this as the rotor is heavy and it must not be dragged across the stator windings as doing that would damage them. The second end plate is then removed and placed on the opposite end of the stator housing. The fan is removed as it is not needed and just causes unnecessary drag, and the rotor is inserted the opposite way round to the way it was removed. That is, the housing is now the other way round relative to the rotor, since the rotor has been turned through 180 degrees before being replaced. The same part of the shaft of the rotor passes through the same end plate as before as the end plates have also been swapped over. The end plates are bolted in position and the rotor shaft spun to confirm that it still rotates as freely as before. To reduce friction to an absolute minimum, the motor bearings need to be cleaned to an exceptional level. There are various ways of doing this. One of the best is to use a carburetor cleaner spray from your local car accessories shop. Spray inside the bearings to wash out all of the packed grease. The spray evaporates if left for a few minutes. Repeat this until the shaft spins perfectly, then put one, and only one, drop of light oil on each bearing and do not use WD-40 as it leaves a residue film. The result should be a shaft which spins absolutely perfectly. The next step is to connect the windings of the two units. The motor, the prime mover, is wired for 480 volt operation. This is done by connecting winding terminals 4 to 7, 5 to 8 and 6 to 9 as shown below. The diagram shows 120 volts AC as being the power supply. This is because the rotoverter design makes the motor operate at a much lower input than the motor designers intended. If this motor were operated in the standard way, a 480 volt three phase supply would be connected to terminals 1, 2 and 3 and there would be no capacitors in the circuit. It is suggested that the jumpering of the motor windings is more neatly done by removing the junction box cover and drilling through it to carry the connections outside to external connectors, jumpered neatly to show clearly how the connections have been made for each unit, and to allow easy alterations should it be decided to change the jumpering for any reason. The same is done for the unit which is to be used as the alternator. To increase the allowable current draw, the unit windings are connected to give the lower voltage with the windings connected in parallel as shown below with terminals 4, 5 and 6 strapped together, 1 connected to 7, 2 connected to 8 and 3 connected to 9. This gives a three phase output on terminals 1, 2 and 3. This can be used as a three phase AC output or as three single phase AC outputs or as a DC output by wiring it as shown here. Alternator The motor and the alternator are then mounted securely in exact alignment and coupled together. The switching of the direction of the housing on the drive motor allows all of the jumpering to be on the same side of the two. Units when they are coupled together, facing each other. Motor Alternator The input drive may be from an inverter driven from a battery charged via a solar panel. The system how needs to be tuned and tested. This involves finding the best starting capacitor which will be switched into the circuit for a few seconds at startup, and the best running capacitor. To summarize, this device takes a low power 110 volt AC input and produces a much higher power electrical output which can be used for powering much greater loads than the input could power. 
the output power is much higher than the input power. This is free energy under whatever name you like to apply to it. One advantage which should be stressed, is that very little in the way of construction is needed, and off-the-shelf motors are used. Also, no knowledge of electronics is needed, which makes this one of the easiest to construct free energy devices available at the present time. One slight disadvantage is that the tuning of the prime mover motor depends on its loading and most loads have different levels of power requirement from time to time. A 220 volt AC motor can also be used if that is the local supply voltage. If an alternator is being driven by the rotoverter motor, the prime mover, but although the shaft is being rotated rapidly there is no output voltage, then it is likely that the alternator has been sitting around unused for a long time and has lost the magnetic properties which it needs at startup. To fix this, connect each of the three output windings, one at a time, across a car battery for about 5 seconds to develop some magnetism and the alternator will then work. This is a one-off thing only needed after a long period of inactivity. It is not essential to construct the rotoverter exactly as shown above, although that is the most common form of construction. The Muller motor mentioned earlier, can have a 35 kW output when precision constructed as Bill Muller did. One option therefore, is to use one Balder motor jumpered as the prime mover drive motor and have it drive one or more Muller motor style rotors to generate the output power. TJ Chorister in America has used a rotoverter style circuit for some time now. He uses a 200 volt three phase electric motor driven by a single phase 120 volt 60 hertz mains. He says, the hot wire goes direct to one phase, and it also goes through a run capacitor to the second phase, also through an inductor to the third phase. You have to experiment with the values of the capacitor and inductor in order to get the smoothest running of the motor. Often, you will not even need a switched starting capacitor. Generally, a 1 horsepower motor will output about 3 quarters of a horsepower. However, the arrangement will be much more efficient than a single phase motor. The neutral is not needed, but be sure to use a ground connected to the frame of the motor. Run capacitors pass about 1 amp for each 22 microfarads of its capacity and so they act as current limiters when in series in an AC circuit. Inductors should have wire which is thick enough to carry the current needed by the motor. I have no guidelines for inductors, so just try it, if you can measure one leg of the motor winding, then that would be about right for the inductor. The inductor value is adjusted by trial and error until you find the value where the motor runs most smoothly. If a starting capacitor is needed, then just parallel a starting capacitor and switch and connect a bleeder resistor to the run capacitor. The circuit is like this.